हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू मैन लॉग आई एस करंट अफेयर एनालिसिस फॉर ट्वेंटी एथ ऑफ मे टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन दीज आर द आर्टिकल्स दैट विल बी डीलिंग टूडे दिस इज़ ए न्यूज आर्टिकल रिगार्डिंग द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्टेटस फॉर कन्वेंशन सेंटर्स नाउ वी विल बी नॉट जस्ट लुकिंग एट दिस न्यूज आइटम बिकॉज इट इज़ ऑफ लिटल सिग्निफिकेंस डायरेक्टली बट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द टर्म इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्टेटस द सिग्निफिकेंस बिहाइंड इट एंड वाई द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्टेटस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द ग्रोथ ऑफ लॉजिस्टिक्स and infrastructure in our country let us understand the basics behind this first what are the factors of production in an economy we have land we have labor capital and entrepreneurship now what what are the common factors that facilitate this uh, production we need certain infrastructure to uh, ensure that entrepreneurship takes place so some sort of value addition should happen when we utilize these basic factors now in order to better utilize the available resources like labor we have to build certain infrastructure infrastructure is very crucial for the growth of our country if you take a look at the gdp formula we have consumption investment government expenditure and net exports or net trade rather now in this aspect if you take a look exports the component is directly related to growth if we have to have higher exports the cost of moving that goods from the places of production that is factories to the point where they are exported like ports airports etc requires logistics and when we are talking about logistics we are also talking about the ability to store something the ability to transport something and at the same time the ability to host something so given this considerations we have to understand we are talking about uh, industries like it where we have to host it servers and also uh, it will involve warehouses for e-commerce websites all this will also come into this aspect now we have to optimize this cost for all this we need infrastructure so in this present case we're talking about convention centers or places where people can meet and certain international events can be organized even international exhibitions which are important for marketing activities all this requires infrastructure so in order to build this we will need money because money uh, will actually put all this infrastructure in place and getting this money is definitely not possible for government alone we need to mobilize all sort of resources and therefore entrepreneurship is not the primary objective of the government but rather the private entities in this scenario the biggest challenge is therefore mobilizing this money this tag of infrastructure status is to ensure that the fund flow for these infrastructure projects is in place the biggest problem with respect to infrastructure is that they have a very long gestation period say if a project is sanctioned in 2010 it would take almost 15 to 20 years to finish that project as a result the cost involved in this significantly escalates now if the infrastructure um, contractor who is actually building this goes to a bank and procures a loan at a certain rate x for a period why unless and until he finish uh, this particular project in the stipulated time period and starts generating revenue he can't actually pay the money back to the bank what this results in is bank will be very hesitant to give money because that money will be stuck for a very long period there might be certain clauses where in the interim period the financer has to pay a small amount of interest but that is not sufficient for banks to run their businesses and there is every risk of these uh, projects turning into non performing assets because of loss there can be a change of government and uh, interference by the politicians sometimes happened in the previous cases which led to these projects becoming non performing assets considering all this the need for uh, external commercial borrowing as well as uh, ensuring long term finance becomes very crucial for the 
success of an infrastructure project it is in this context in 2009 the cabinet committee on uh, infrastructure came up with a harmonized list of uh, infrastructure projects so till then in order to avail this long term uh, finance or external commercial borrowings there is a discrepancy regarding the definition of what constitutes infrastructure to clear that and all the ambiguity associated this harmonized list was released by the government which had five categories so there are some more sub categories as well and it will be extended from time to time so in the present context giving the infrastructure status to this convention center will ensure that now these uh, projects which bid to uh, build this convention centers can actually go to the finances for this long term funds at a much cheaper cost that is the rate of interest say if it is 10% in banks these other resources will give it at a much cheaper rate say for example 8% so that is the advantage of this infrastructure status tag that is the gist of this article the second article is titled bengal wants upper house back how states have councils so at the state level there are certain states like six of them which have two houses one there is the legislative council and the other one the lower house is directly elected legislative assembly so the context in which we are talking about these uh, legislative houses is recently bengal has announced that it would be coming up with a, a legislative council in the state as a part of the fulfillment of the promise it made in its election manifesto by the sitting government that is the trinamool congress it made a promise that it would bring back the legislative council now that they came back to power they decided to go ahead with this proposal so currently we have six states which have this legislative council that is uttar pradesh bihar maharashtra telangana and andhra pradesh also we have karnataka in this list recently that is almost one year ago on 27th january 2020 almost 18 months ago in fact so the ap government decided that they would do away with this uh, legislative council but we have to understand that the final decision lies with the parliament it must be noted that in west bengal state legislative assembly existed till 1969 it was existing between 1952 to the 1969 and after that it was dissolved by the united front government for the formation of a council a bill needed to be placed in the state legislative assembly and such a bill will require the governor's assent after it is passed by the assembly in 1969 parliament has actually passed the west bengal legislative council abolition act so this was done by the act of a parliament according to article 169 uh, of the indian constitution there is a need for uh, a constitutional amendment as well after the state legislative assembly decides that they need a state legislative council slightly deviating from the upsc syllabus we have to understand the present context so in a major turn of political fortunes we have seen that the incumbent chief minister mamata banerji has lost to suvendu adhikari a bjp candidate by a narrow margin in nandigram in west bengal although she was sworn in as the chief minister of the state banerji needs to actually win a seat in the bipoles within the next 6 months so either they need a bipole or the other route that they would be needing is she getting elected as the state legislative council's member so failing to win an election in the next 6 months will lead to her dismissal from the post of chief minister so in order to avoid contesting polls after an embarrassing defeat to adhikari uh, she would now want to take this state legislative council route so looking at the political reality the power at the center is with bjp 
which is the political rival so there are certain political commentators who would say that uh, they would be denying a chance for mamata benerji who wants to be the chief minister of west bengal despite all such odds so we have to wait and watch what would be the scene similar cases were witnessed in the case of maharashtra's chief minister uddhav thakre but in his case maharashtra already has a state legislative uh, council in place and he was elected on a post as a member of the state legislative council mamata benerji does not have one such opportunity and therefore the party has proposed that there shall be a state legislative council now that the majority power is with uh, trinamool congress in the legislative assembly of west bengal it is definitely going to pass but the problem is it also requires center's consent that is parliament's consent and in the present situation parliament has a majority of one party uh, and unless and until the party in power recognizes the need for such a legislative assembly or legislative council rather it would be very difficult that is the gist of this article